Hey guys, this guy here from YCG, your casual gamer. In this episode, we're going to be working on the alarm state for those two lights over here using a scalar parameter. The, this technique I learned it inside the Blueprint class project, The Office in Unreal Engine 4. I've actually migrated an asset two episodes ago if you want to go get it, but uh, you don't need it because we're going to be learning how they made theirs. And through their learnings, we're going to make our own material and our own light. And we're going to add it to our level with a trigger volume. And this is what it's going to look like afterward. You're going to walk up to the trigger volume and the lights are going to go off. And when you work out, they're going to go on. Now, uh, if you've been following my episode, we can, uh, we're can we going to add it to the door after so that when you open the door with the power, uh, the alarm state goes on. So stay tuned. All right, so let's go see how this was made over here. So jump inside the BP security flashing light. So when I was uh, going through, I saw how they were using the scalar parameter over here and this. But what really bugged me is how they triggered the alarm. It's very different than what I would be used to. And I actually learned this and I wanted to share the information with you guys. They actually use a blueprint interface, just like we use on our on interact event. If you double click here, they just added a function to, our, to their blueprint interface and put a, a boolean there so that when you would call it, you would just have to choose if the information is being sent true or false, which is brilliant, really, but I'm not going to use this way of using it. But it would be nice to know. So like over here, you send the information that say true, it sets it, and then it goes inside the branch and decide if it's going to go true or false. Very neat trick to learn. Now let's move on. So what happens over here is very simple. Is the spotlight goes on, the on light, which is the off light, goes off, and then the scalar parameter is the thing we want to learn first over here. So I went inside their material and went to check what did they do for the scalar parameter. And you have all this thing, all this over here that is in charge of the uh, normal map for the mesh they use, which we don't need. Well, what I'm interested in and is in these four little nodes over here. So here you have the scalar parameter, which they use over here. And they use the name very case sensitive, so be careful to make sure to use the same name. Uh, alarm state, they choose a value to 1 or 0. If you look at the linear interpretate, interpolate, you see the at 0 is A. So you see that this color is going to come out when it's, the value is going to be set to 0. So that means it's off. And when it's on, it's going to set up to 1, which is going to be the constant B. If you would set a value like 0 0.5, it would do a mix of the two colors, which is not what we're trying to do here. So that's what they did over here inside their blueprint. So let's go ahead and recreate this. So we're going to grab this over here. We just have to copy it inside our material. I already have it in emissive material, and if you've been following my episode, you have it too. We're just going to copy it and paste it over here. Now the lens, lens color one is going to be the on light, which I don't need. So I'm going to just use my own light over here and connect it to the A. And then I want to keep the emissive after because I want the emissive to apply to either the on or off condition. So just Alt and click here to break the connection. And for my uh, red, I'm going to use an orange kind of bright orange. I like that for my alarm state. Just like that, I'm going to leave the same name for the scalar parameter because it's perfect for what we're using it for and then we're going to connect it to the multiplier and you're going to have your color. By default it's going to be set to 0 like you see over here apply and save. So now if I go ahead <coughs> and put it in it would work but the first color would be white and the way I made my emissive material is that I made copies of them and I choose the color I wanted it to be. So let's say I wanted to use, in the last episode, I used the blue neon over here. If I go inside here, I can choose the lens color for the alarm state. And what I'm going to do is, I like how this is already. If you want to change it, that's for you. I'm going to choose over here to put this one to, no, we don't need this. Let's put it to a bright orange. Maybe 0 0.5. And there you go, bright orange. Save it, and we're done with this. And we're done with this too. And now let's build our program. So inside the light, a couple things we're going to need to do. Because what they did here, they have a spotlight and a light. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a spotlight. Spotlight, call it alarm 
uh, light like that and we're gonna go ahead and inside the construction script choose this color right away so we're gonna do a set color and make a new variable over here promote it and call it alarm custom color make it editable and put it up here and make sure to choose its default value now or else you're gonna have a black light which is not gonna show anything in game so I'm gonna choose my bright orange over here that I like be more red like this good okay compile and save and you're done with this part so inside the event graph we're gonna need two custom event so custom event which the first one is gonna be the alarm on event and you guessed it the second one is going to be the alarm off if I learn how to spell always the same problem I go too quick all right so the first thing now we learn how to make the scalar parameter so we have to set it up like they did over here so when the alarm is on we need to set the scalar parameter to one so let's do that over here when the alarm is on, we're going to set the, actually no, we have our light material over here that we did in the last episode. So get this and set scalar parameter value, put it to one and make sure the name is good, case sensitive, remember. So <clears throat> to make sure, I'm going to go inside my MSA material and grab the actual name over here. Control C and Control V in here. That way you're sure you have the right spelling. For me, that's very important because I always make uh, uh, mistakes. So now when it's off, you're going to put it to zero. So we're going to go on like this. So for the on and then for the off. So then what's going to happen over here? We're going to have the visibility of the light. Control C. We're going to make four of these. One, two, three, and four. So the first one like this. This one here. And like this. And like that. The alarm is on. Is the light on on? No. Is the spotlight, so the alarm light, we're going to put the alarm light here and the alarm light here. Is the alarm light, alarm light on? Yes. Visibility is on. Good. Connect everything. You're done. Now for the off, the light on is going to be on and reverse over here. This one is going to be off. And you're done with this. So now let's apply our rotation to our light. The way they did it over here is they used a gate. And so what they did to the, at the base is they took the spotlight, took the relative rotation, break the rotation, kept the X and the Y in check. So that means they didn't ch touch that. And they only rotated the uh, light on the Z axis, the yaw. They added by the multiply of the light rotation by the event tick, which is the delta second, which is very, very quick. So that means the light's going to turn in a very fast speed, and that's going to make it look like an alarm light. And then you set the relative rotation of your spotlight. But they used a gate. Now I'm going to explain to you how the gate works because I never understood first, but it really works like a Boolean. Uh, when it's close, let's say the close is the false, the uh, enter is the true, and the open is just something that triggers uh, the open or close it triggers if it's true or false so what the event tick is trying to do over here is trying to enter to get to the exit and to do his program but if it's closed that means if it's false if the boolean would be false then nothing goes true then what happens over here is when it I set it on I just open the gate which sets the value to true and allows the information to go through that's pretty much sums up what a uh, gate is. So for my program, I'm just going to use a boolean, which is simpler for me, and it's more clear. You don't have to ask yourself a million questions. It's there, and it works like this because it's like that. But the gate is cute and fancy if you want to use it. So copy this inside your uh, event over here, and we're going to delete this. And now we're going to need to change a few things. So in me, it's not a spotlight. It's actually the alarm light that I'm going to put over here. You can go ahead and recreate this if you didn't have the migrated uh, asset. 
Uh, over here, where I'm going to create the variable, bring it inside the customizable, make sure it's customizable, and make sure to give it a default value because it, now it goes back to uh, zero. Their numbers were 700, and I find it works very well for the program, so I kept it. Now for the event tick, it's going to check for a boolean that I need to create, which is going to be the alarm state. This, we're going to leave it inside component because it's not something that's going to be customizable. And you can put it here as a question mark and branch it together with the event tick. So now, just like the gate, we're going to look, the event tick is going to look for the true to be set to true, the alarm state to be set to true. If the alarm state is set to true, which is open in our case of a gate, then the information can carry on. If, the, if it's false, the gate is closed, then nothing goes through. Now, how are we going to open this? Very simple. When we call on the event, we're just going to set the alarm state to true. And then the information is going to be able to go through your gate, which is your Boolean over here. And same thing over here. You can just copy this, copy off, and just close the gate or put the value off. And it's going to be able to work over here. It won't work anymore. The alarm is going to go off. And you're done with your programming. Now let's go ahead and test it out. Very simple. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drag a key trigger volume like this. Put it inside my level. Make sure selecting it, you go inside your uh, level blueprint. And we're going to do a, an event on collision, add begin overlap, and same thing on and overlap. And what we're going to do now is we're going to go grab our lights. Now make sure that everything is well positioned. Since you played around with your lights, you might have your point light back in the wall and the alarm light is in the wall right now, so that's not good. You can just drag it out. Make sure it's like in the middle of the mesh, in front of the mesh. Same thing over here. The, uh, the, the light, the spotlight, is so, uh, the uh, point light is so good, but the this one is not too good. Let's just put it like that. And oh yeah, I forgot. I wanted to add, put the light in the alarm light. We're going to put it a default value to 10,000. It's a lot brighter. It's going to be easier for you guys to see. So now that the lights are well in position, we're going to select one and select the other by holding control. You're going to go inside your level blueprint and we're going to add a reference to the two of them. Make sure you're inside the right stream volume and just drag here and alarm, call the alarm on. Connect the two over here like this. And then over here we're going to do alarm off and connect the two over here. And then it's going to work. And now I'm being lazy, but what we should do is we should have a check that makes sure that it's the character that gets there. So we're going to do a cast to first person character and connect this like that. Control C, Control V. That way, if ever you have a project right now and you have another object that's interacting with the trigger box, you don't want this to trigger off your alarm. You just want your character to do so. But if it was the other case, then it would work. So now, let's go ahead and see. I go inside the level, I go up to the, the light, they go off, the alarm state goes on, the material changes, and when I get out, it goes back to normal like nothing happened. There you go, I hope you enjoy this. Now for those that have been following my videos, very simple. <coughs> We're going to add it to the door when we add power to it. So we don't need this anymore. Just get rid of it. And inside my level blueprint, the only reason it told me that is because I have a reference to it over here, which I can get rid of it. I don't need it anymore. And now the reference I'm going to need is the two reference that we just created. And it's just going to be like this. Uh, I don't have anything for the lights off because it's going to go on. It's going to stay on in our, in our case. But it could be different the way you do the program. So I'm just going to drag this like this. So when you activate the door, the alarm are going to go off. And you don't need this anymore. Close this. And you don't need the, the box. Close that too. 
and now it should work. That simple to add it to our program. So just go ahead and start up here. It's going to be faster. I'm just going to go ahead, activate the switch. Go inside my level. Now the first thing I see is the, the two spotlights are already on. That's not good. Let's see ahead what happens after. Open this and everything works. There you go. Hope you enjoy this. Uh, my mistake I did, very simple, is because since the two lights are already set to on at first, is inside the light blueprint, you have to make sure that when you're turning them on, you actually turn off the uh, spotlight. This one over here, uh, you just have to drag it here and like that. And then it's going to work. See if I go back inside the level. If I go back inside the level, now you see we don't see the spotlight. So have a good night. And in the next episode, we're going to start working on the second part of our level. So we're going to build our uh, end part to be uh, almost done with all the, the cool stuff we're learning for this season. So have a good day. See you next time.